Hi everyone and welcome along to Sonic Academy's first look with me Chris and Yelly. In this one we're going to take a first look at Logic Pro update. It's up to Logic Pro 10.0.5 and it's quite a significant update. If we head to the release notes uh, you can see there's new features and there have been probably around 450 enhancements or bug fixes. Which we'll not go through every one. There are a lot of little minor niggly things. Some things that just weren't happening on the, say, the graphical user interface or in the audio or drummer or MIDI editors or score editors or plugins or video. And it goes on. Uh, I do hope that uh, there are several fixes related to stability and reliability. I hope that these uh, do resolve unexpected quits. Uh, whilst Logic now does an autosave and you can load it back up in the same state... Uh, there are a few things that don't happen. Some soft sense, third-party soft sense, you can lose the sounds and stuff, and it can just interrupt, you know, the creative uh, workflow. So hopefully, uh, we will have a more stable, uh, slightly better program. Uh, but we want to take a look today at the the new features, and uh, I suppose the headlines are new drummer, uh, new drummers, new kits, and new plugins well they're not new plugins they're redesigned uh, eq plugins and we'll take a look at those guys and a couple of other little uh, quirky things that are uh, kind of will help for me so let's create a new drummer track and let's quickly flick through the drummers so if we go to rock we have a new guy here ian who looks very like uh, a guy if you grew up in 90s britain uh, will be familiar and he's called Liam so just put an L in front of his name and the first preset is Morning Glory which is a big hit from the band Oasis and so it's a Manchester kit with a drummer called Ian and the preset's Morning Glory it can't be any more obvious than that really so let's have a listen yeah so it's a big It's a big uh, stadium rock kit. New feature here is swing. We have a uh, new swing. So we've got 16 swing. And we can also do an 8 swing. So, yeah, another enhancement to the drummer. Drummer is very, very clever. You know, there's a lot of really interesting uh, sort of ideas going underneath drummer and how it can, it'll never play the same fill twice and it knows to come in on, on, a diff, on an offbeat and, and stuff. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's something I don't particularly touch a lot because kind of I work in the dance music world. Uh, but, you know, if it's a singer-songwriter or... Or recording bands, Jesus, it'd be great. Uh, alternate, alternative. I think they're all pretty much the same. Songwriter, new guy, Parker, is it? Yeah. Um, what's his kit? Liverpool kit. So it's going to be backbeat. This is going to be a Mersey beat. Oh, uh, Beatles and uh, so from the sixties. You know, there's the cavern. Ringo never sounded so good. So yeah, grand R and B, and there's a new hipster uh, called Benny, and it's a Motown. Yeah, uh, they also state there's 11 new kits. Uh, so Liverpool, Manchester, Motown's new. Scientific Method, can't, um, not 100% sure if that's new. Uh, but they're in the producer kits. There's 8-bit kit. It It is essentially a acoustic kit just treated.
so there is fake machine French Connection, which I presume is probably taking its cues from uh, the highly successful Daft, Daft Punk album, so it's going to be a nice big sort of woolly acoustic y kit. Yep, and that's what it is. And then we have Hi Fi Pop, Liverpool, Manchester. These are all the plus uh, kits that we can get this disclosure triangle down and we can zoom in on. Uh, the individual, you know, mics. Overhead. Kick in, kick out. I mean, go in and, you know, mix all these guys. There's all the... And it's interesting, as I said before, in my, in my other first look, uh, you should go in and have a look at these kits because they are mixed by the top guys and it gives you a little bit of an insight in how they mix their drums and what sort of effects they're putting on different things. So, yeah, go and look at these plus kits and open them up and have a look uh, at around inside them. Uh, I think the next thing we're going to take a look at, uh, which is you know kind of exciting, is channel EQ. And this is our new EQ. Should sound pretty much like the old one. Uh, so if you old lo load up old songs, the settings should all sound the same. Uh, but there's been some significant enhancements. It's completely redesigned. Uh, it reminds me a lot of FabFilter. Uh, it's really nice to look at. And so let's have a listen. You know, we can. It'll all be very familiar if you know you're using. We can. shelf and what they've done they've you can you can now grab either the bell the gain and the frequency all within this uh, band so we can move the band in the bell in and out the gain up and down and the frequency so we can we can have lots of fun with it and a uh, couple of new things analyzer we can switch on so post and pre, so pre the EQ and then after the EQ, so we can, that's before the EQ, that's after, you can see our, uh, you'll notice that there's two analyzer lines and that's the left and right channel, Q couple, uh, this will maintain our Q with bigger degrees of gain. You can see the, the width here is moving out and then in. And you see it doesn't move at all there. Uh, then we have processing. Um, we have now these are great. Left only, so we can only process the left hand side of the signal. The right only. The mid. Uh, which, if you don't know about sort of mid side, uh, sort of basic way to describe it is uh, mid is everything that's mono, and side is everything that's not common to the mono signal. So it would be almost our stereo information. So mid will be all the mono stuff. So if we're starting to use this uh, EQ, say in our master channel, we could probably insert a couple of them and. <clears throat> what I would love to have seen is for the bands to be able to process the bands in either mid, side or stereo. Uh, and we could have had a real good mastering EQ. Uh, what we tend to do in mastering is we'd mono the bottom end. We try and keep it as, uh, as as mono as possible and then widen the top. Is is you know Think of it as a funnel. Uh, so a nice wide shimmering top and a nice mono tight bottom end uh pa systems and stuff would would tend to mono you know all the bottom end anyway because it's, it's not directional so uh and we used to be very important in cutting vinyl records which isn't so much of a thing nowadays uh so yeah we'd use the mid only to you know roll off some of the bottom ends and 
in mono the bottom end with some slopes on it and then side only we could we could be uh putting shells in the top end to, to give us a nice shimmering wide without affecting uh the stereo the linear phase eq is exactly the same it's just slightly different color what you can do and what they suggest you do is use channel eq during your making process and then once you come to mix you can flip them all to linear it in excuse me it introduces a lot of uh latency uh because it's keeping everything in total phase and it needs a lot more processing so it kind of you can get the sound won't change uh you just the phase will could possibly change so yeah flip to linear eq uh towards the end to stop uh any latency issues that you might have on your system uh what else have we got uh the oversampling uh is has improved on it uh so hopefully should be clear in the top end uh uh just maybe a slight crisper eq but <coughs> yeah what i find strange is opening that lovely new key and look we can grab and and then opening this <laughs> and it just i don't know just looks bizarre nowadays that's uh why they would just and probably this is what's going to happen with incremental updates they are now going to go away and and just redesign uh the guis for all the plugins because i think some of them are looking uh you know really dated you know compared to that so it just it seems a bit strange that they didn't get a team of designers on everything and just do it all in one bash but you know hopefully this is the start of something and they'll all change it'll be really great and lastly uh, another great little improvement is smart controls uh we now have a little eq button here and so if we're using smart controls it appears down here quickly access it you know turn it up or down you know same it's there also this smart controls will appear on your ipad so we can now EQ from the iPad, uh, which is really, really handy. Uh, the next thing we want to take a look at is uh, piano roll. So switch off smart controls. And let's take a look. And I've already done it here, but I'll show you. Uh, we have changed the background. And so I think we go to preferences. Is it MIDI? Let me just remind myself where it is. Yeah, sorry. It's in display, editors, background. So we can now have a, an option to what I would have loved to have seen is maybe a slider, you know, some you know, contrast slider. What I did have problems with, and I was only getting used to in the piano roll, uh, it used to be very easy in Logic 9 and stuff to see this line, this uh, downbeat line was a bit more pronounced. So the one, the two, the three, the four, these all kind of blend in, to my eyes anyway, uh, to one. Um, now with the lighter background it's just a little bit easier to see it but i would prefer to see these lines a bit thicker uh but yeah an improvement uh but i would love to have seen a slider so you could select your own sort of color uh <coughs> other little things are we now have uh let me take away we now have a different color in our click So that lets us know we're in. That lets us know we are in click while recording. So it's all off. Switch it on. Switch it off. It's not purple. If we have uh, click while recording, it turns purple. So we know that we have a click while recording. So there you go. So little things like that, uh, and the other really interesting thing i wanted to, to take a look at 
is let's take off solo mute that say hot topper and we'll go down here and we'll have a look at this and we've kind of been crying out for something like this for a long time and it's on its way to being dynamic waveforms uh, so let's go to the info and if we open up our region parameters and if we put in some gain if you watch the waveform of this audio track if I turn it let's switch off the metronome if I turn the gain up our waveforms go up and down so yeah pretty cool I'd like to see be lovely to see more dynamic waveforming going on So that's pretty much uh, the new Logic 10.0.5. I think a lot of lot of little nifty little improvements, especially with the EQ. Uh, Going to get a real good play with it over the weekend now and, and start to see uh, how it sounds, see if this uh, oversampling on the top end uh, works. And there's now double processing, so hopefully the, the lower ends we can get really... Uh, more accurate filtering going on the low end so hopefully you know it could you know we do i do use channel eq quite a lot but purely simple because it's there uh and it you know it's it's sort of embedded in the channel strip so to speak uh so hopefully it brings a whole new world of possibilities with it i hope that was helped this is the first look uh with sonic academy and i'll speak to you all soon